In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front display on the iPad Air 4. We're going to begin by powering down the device, if you can, and then I'm going to take it over to the hot plate to get it nice and warm so that we can soften the adhesive on these edges, allowing us to remove the screen. If you don't have a heat plate, you can use a hot air gun or a hairdryer to achieve the same effect, but just beware, they will take a lot longer to get it warm enough to remove it. This iPad opens from right to left, so up that way. So I'm gonna pop the suction cup on this side of the display. And once it's warmed up a little bit, I'm gonna begin lifting and squirting a little bit of isopropyl alcohol along this edge. I'm not too worried about damaging this any further. Although the glass is intact, the LCD is battered and the full display replacement is required. Once you've lifted it up a little bit with the suction cup, it should come away quite easily from the chassis. Once you get to the corner, run some more isopropyl alcohol and begin running a guitar pick just a couple of millimeters in. Don't go too deep because there is some flex cables that can get easily damaged along this edge. But once it's separated a little bit, you'll find that it comes away quite easily like that. Let's go down to the bottom edge now. I'm gonna move the suction cup down there to make it a little bit easier as well. And I'm just gonna run it around the corner and begin lifting, prying, and running the guitar pick down the edge. If you get little bits of adhesive that stick, just cut them away because it can get a bit awkward like that. And then look at that. This display's come away very easily, just like that. Just a note, like I've not got this hot. I don't think my heat plate's even hot enough yet to, to warm it up. So it just shows how, how easy it is to remove these displays on this model. If the glass is cracked, it's a little bit trickier, but when they're intact, it makes it very easy. Let's go over to the workbench and get this torn down now. So now that the screen's separated, I'll pop a mug behind the iPad to stop it from falling over as we lift it up like that. And then I'm gonna remove this screw here. It's very important that you do this step. This is the battery connector and power needs to be isolated from the device before you start disconnecting other things. To set to isolate the power, use an insulated piece of material. I like to use this clear plastic card. It's just nice and thin. I have in the past used these guitar picks like that, but they are a little bit thick and it can cause damage to the connectors underneath. The thinner, the better. Next, we're gonna remove this screw just here. And that's gonna spring up like that, allowing us to get some tweezers. And with this one, it's a bit funny because it sort of slides out like that. And you can get the shield out of the way. Use a plastic prying tool to disconnect the LCD and the first of the two touch FPCs, and then move a little bit further up the logic board where there are two more crosshead screws that hold down the second of the touch FPCs. Use your tweezers to pop this out and then your plastic prying tool to disconnect that one. Now that that screen's separated, we're just gonna open it up fully and sort of snap the screen off like that. That's the display removed. This could technically just get thrown in the bin now. We don't need to do anything else on this, unlike other iPad models where you have to do the home button or the face ID module. That doesn't have any of these, so it's very easy to repair. Now, when you're buying the screen for this, there are a couple of versions. You can see this is the Wi-Fi version. There's a second version for the cellular option, so just make sure that you order the right part. And this one is a refurbished LCD, which means that it's a genuine Apple LCD, so it's all original. The only difference is that it's got an aftermarket piece of glass or digitizer on top, usually the digitizer as well. And yeah, it's just makes it a lot easier to do if you're using original parts. I will try and remember to put a link in the description below. I'm just gonna remove all the tape on the back of the display. And there is a sort of film on the backlight here. We'll get that out of the way. These are always horrible to remove. There is another bit of something on the back of the LCD. I'm guessing there's some tape on there. And the same on the back of this touch flex here. Just be careful when you're handling these because whilst that bit looks wide, you can see they're attached to two very thin cables there. But just pop that onto there, stick it down, and then there's another bit of adhesive on this one that needs to be pulled off. Let's get some trusty alcohol on there, the plastic tool, and then we're just gonna sort of rub it side by side and it is separating, look. That's vile. Frustratingly, this display has got no adhesive on it. So we're gonna have to tape up 
this screen. To put it simply, I'm gonna get some three mil Tessa tape. I'll tell a lie, it's five mil Tessa tape. And I'm gonna cut strips off. And we're not gonna do a craft lesson, but I'm just gonna stick them onto the edge of the display like that. I'll use the back of the spudger to secure it down. Make sure that it goes on straight. And then just sort of cutting the edges off. And I'll tidy it up in a minute. I'll show you how I do that. I'll keep them two strips because up at the top, if your display comes with no adhesive, you'll notice that there's little sort of clear parts, which are the sensors. So I'm just gonna sort of cut around those. So that bit there, cut a small strip. And then there's another section just here. If I'd have known it didn't have tape with it, which I'm a bit annoyed about, then I would have bought an adhesive kit. But sometimes these things happen, so you've got to be prepared to improvise a little bit, I suppose. So then we've got one more here. I'll just take that off there, and then we'll keep going on the other side. One sensor on this side, a little bit more here. I'll cut that on the angle there, so that it sort of covers that bit. And I know what you're gonna say, you've missed five mil there, you missed five mil there and there. But guess what? It's not gonna affect it. That's gonna stick down fine and everything will be good in the end. The side with the touch connectors on is a bit more awkward. I'll bend that back. And what I'm aiming to do is sort of slide it underneath the digitizer. We'll trim this right down in a minute. And then I'll just use the spudger to sort of stick it down where it'll go. Same here. Last bit goes on the bottom here. Just be careful when you're poking around with the plastic spudger on this bit because there is these cables are very fragile and very important for the LCD. The touch cables are replaceable, however they're not. Now I'm just going to get a fresh blade like this one and I'm going to trim off the edges. Is this the best contact number to get you on? Just being careful not to poke anything, stab anything. Now we've got this long edge which we needed to trim off. Just be very careful on this one because obviously you've got the touch connectors and the LCD connector. Make sure they're out of the way and you're not slicing them off because it's going to cost you money to refurbish this if you need to trim these corners off. Make sure that there's none sticking out in there. And then last one is this corner. I've lied to you guys. I didn't run it along the connector edge. I thought they were not in the way. So let's just hold them out of the way with my hand and then run the blade along to separate it. Just be very careful. So that's all taped up. Let's go back to the iPad where we just need to clean it up a little bit real quick. The easiest way to remove all the adhesive or the thicker the adhesive is to use one of these number 17 X-Acto blades and you're just going to run it along those edges being very careful of any flex cables in the way. So just take your time and scrape off as much of the adhesive as you physically can. Do one edge at a time being careful not to damage anything, especially the battery and the touch ID flex cable. The last bit is this top area. This is where the flex cables are most abundant. So just avoid the camera, the sensors and everything else that gets in the way. Sometimes you'll find that iPad, the iPad that you're working on is very dirty. If it is, use one of these little wire brushes and that just gets into the edges. It's not gonna scratch the aluminum housing. Don't worry about that. Or it might scratch it very lightly, but you you will never ever see it. With that clean, all that you need now is some alcohol or some acetone. I prefer acetone as long as you're not working on plastics. And that's going to just dissolve any remaining adhesive and just make it really, really shiny, clean, good. It's very important not to skip the cleaning part of this. It's probably the most important step in the iPad repair itself, because failure to do this properly means that the screen will separate from the housing and cause you a headache later on down the line when you've got to remove the screen again, do the cleaning job again, and try and stick it down. Another note that I'll add while I'm just cleaning up is that using this method, we don't need to clamp the iPad into anything. We're not gonna glue it down there's no need for clamps unless the, there's a bend or something on the iPad. But using this method means that as soon as I've screwed this down, pushed around the edges, it means that it's good to go. Now that that's nice and clean, we're just going to get our mug back behind the iPad like that. Then we're going to bring our screen back and we're going to offer up these cables 
starting off with the one at the top push that down and whilst we're up here we might as well secure it down as well so drop that shield on there and then you've got two silver screws crosshead ones that hold down that connector or shield whatever you want to call it then we'll go back down the bottom here where we've got the lcd connector and touch connector as well just a little note that LCD connector is very springy on this model, so make sure that it's connected properly before you secure it in. That's the touch in. That's the LCD in. And then with this connector here, let me zoom in. It's got like a little hinge or latch that it goes onto just here. And then there's some little, like it's like a hook almost that it connects under. So you, what you've got to do, you've got to slide that under there, push it down like that and that holds it in place on that side and then the screw holds it in on the other. Secure it down with that single silver crosshead screw. Now we'll pull out the battery isolator and secure down the battery again. Make sure you don't miss this step. If you turn the iPad back on and it's boot looping, it's probably because this isn't secured properly. If you're finding that you're getting that, just give it a little push either side of the battery connector and that just makes sure that it's pushed down properly and secured then all that remains to do is to use some fine tweezers to remove the adhesive this would be a good hold point and just to check that the ipad boots i'm going to carry on with the repair regardless it's a bit awkward when you've cut the, all these off just persevere make sure that it's stuck down good remove all the adhesive notice how i'm going to leave that side for now i'm just going to get these three edges that are easy to access off first and the reason that I do that is because these little flex cables can sometimes stick to it and cause you problems. So I'll do that the very last thing. Let's fold down the iPad now very carefully and line it up along this bottom edge here. Line it up in the corners, make sure that it's sat real nice and flat. And then you can tip the iPad up because we've not pushed this side down yet. And we're going to peel off that bit of tape that we've put on this side. Now we can just sort of squeeze it to close it up. And then we're just gonna run our fingers down the edges. Make sure that it's stuck down. Make sure that there's no adhesive poking out where you might have trimmed it badly. So have a good feel along the edge. Make sure that it's flush as you're pushing it down. And this is just a sort of checkpoint. I'm just making sure that it's all secure. And while it's doing that, I could even uh, boot the iPad up, I suppose. And like I said, this is ready to go now. It's secured down, it's not going to come off. Like I could give it a shake around, test that touch works. And that is repair complete. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.